Hi everyone, um, my name is Vasily Don Rebo, and uh, thank you guys for being here today because it's really important. And um, yeah, we loved um, this event, an event like this to kind of inform people and uh, give them more knowledge about different topics. So today I'm talking about the failure of African states. Um, so before I start, let me just define a state. A state is like, not like Illinois or Kentucky, it's more of like a nation. So in this, in this context, state means a nation. So I'm going to introduce you to a boy called Obi. Um, so Obi is obviously in this picture, and he's kind of like malnourished. You can see his rib bones, and he's like he's lacking muscle, and he's like has a really big head and um, really big eyes. Um, this is because of like his parents, his his impoverty basically. He's living in like a really impoverished area, and um, this is not an unfamiliar picture. We see this a lot of the time when we're looking at. Um, Oh, when we're looking at um, when you see on the TV is like 50 cents a day for to feed a child, we see this um, picture, and it's it's really common to like represent Africans in general. Um, but why is this a common representation of Africans? Why do we see this on TV a lot of the time? Why do we always like once we see African or an African person, one of the many images we see is a minority child or person in general, and it's just like. Oh, why? Um, so that, that's one, one question I want to answer today. Um, okay, before I go into my speech, I'll kind of give you some background about myself. Um, okay, yeah, my name is Vasily Zomandwebo, and I am a um, student at IPUI. I study global and international studies, and I focus in on international development. Um, I've been doing research since I came into IEPUI um, from like day one to like currently now, um, doing research with different mentors. And so this is what kind of led me to look at this topic a little bit more because I had to do a research paper in one of my many classes. Um, so, and today I want to focus on failure of African states. Um, many states in Africa are doing as well as they should be doing. They are, the, the political situation is a mess. The what you call it, they they the what the there are rebel groups that are controlling different parts of the country. A lot of people aren't eating. A lot of people don't have money. The economy is not as good as it should be, and there are many reasons for the and this um, these problems. Um, I'm going to address what is state failure, why are states failing, um, how um, then what are some solutions that people have actually given to address this problem in African states. So going back to Obi, um, how many of you have seen a picture like this before? Yeah, most of us have seen a picture like this before. That, and it's, it's really common because of the fact that his parents are just incapable of taking care of him at this moment, right? Um, no one would bring a child to the world and expect them to be like this, expect them to, to would not want to feed them. But when you're in a situation that is so unstable that you can't make enough money for yourself, and for your family, something like this happens. So um, state failure does not just, it's not just an abstract concept that we just like study in books. This is something that leads to actual human beings being like malnourished and suffering from the consequences. These are just one of the many um, examples. And also, if we look at Africa in a whole, we can see Africa as this child will be. We can see um, Africa as a child, as the Thing that is starving right now in malnourished because of so many factors, so many things that have hindered it from actually growing to its full potential. When the child is like this, he will grow to a certain height, he will have a certain weight, and there are so many things that will happen that, would, that he could have done before, but because of all the other factors that were in play in his life, he couldn't achieve it. And this is what we've seen in Af many African states. We've seen the lack of nutrition, basically, in, a sen in that sense, that is allowing African states to kind of reach its full potential. Um, so what is state failure? There are many names for it. Many people have different definitions for it. It depends on the scholar. It depends on the scientist that you're talking to. It has um, different names like weak state, collapsed state, fragile state. But basically, what it just means is when a state cannot provide for its people properly, um, when, whenever here in the U.S. we see 
and we have electricity, we have running water, we have roads that are kind of safe at least. Um, when a state can't actually give you that water, can't give you frequent electricity, it's failing in that sense. Um, when a state can't, doesn't control the territory that it's actually saying it does. If you look at Libya, for example, Libya is this big nation on the, on, the Afri um, on the map. But if you actually look at the Libyan government, it controls that area around the capital and capital city, that's um, Tripoli. And so that's basically what a field state is. Um, many people um, study field states around the world, many um, scholars, and they have developed um, an index called the Fragile State Index. You can see on this map that the states in red, which is mostly African states, kind of show alert. This, th that means that these states are either failed already, they are failing, or they are prone to go, they are prone to failure. And if you look at all the other all the other um, continents, you can see kind of better variations when it comes to colors. B basically, uh, other continents have better um, statuses of their states because of the fact that they are more stable. Um, so why are African states prone to failing? Why is it that this is a phenomenon that we see mostly in Africa? Why is it that if you go to Sudan, Somalia, Libya, that you will see, a sta you, you will see lack of government, or you see more rebel groups, or you see more um, poverty or more impoverishment? These are two of the re many reasons that people have identified. First one is ethnic differences, and the second one is colonial legacy. Okay, how many of you have heard about the Rwandan genocide? So, and all of you kind of know the backstory of it, about it, about the Hutus and, the, and Tutsis. Um, basically, it was kind of like this conflict between um, two groups, which were very, very similar, except for socioeconomic status, and this kind of exploded into one huge, huge, huge dilemma in the world that people could not even like, they didn't even know where to start. That's basically what we mean by ethnic differences. When European countries um, were kind of drawing the borders for the African states, they drew those borders around like um, ethnic groups and between ethnic groups. So kind of like forcing people together that were not together before, forcing them to be under one government. And then a lot of people feel like if this person is doing better than me, that means that person is being malicious towards me, and this person is being discriminatory towards me. And so you see many in many African states, people kind of like, um, using, trying to like secede that, um, from the state or trying to take over in v um, illegal ways, basically, and then um, that causes the state to be more unstable. Then colonial legacy. Um, a lot of African states were colonized. Only two weren't, um, Ethiopia and um, Liberia. And those states um, had um, the colonial um, administrators, basically. And those administrators were, they, they were in control of the finances of the state, in control of the political situation. And they set a legacy of corruption in the sense that if, you, if they had extra money in the states that, were, that was left over from like trade, they, the colonial administrators would take it. They would not use it to kind of develop the people. There was, in, in Angola, by the time the, the Portuguese had left, there was only one university in the whole, in the whole nation. And Angola is just as big as, as Texas, if not larger. So just one university in the whole of Angola when the Portuguese left. And they, they came with that, to that, with that um, ideology that we're going to educate the people. So it kind of shows that there was corruption in that, in that system, and that's what kind of led to the eventual corruption in the states that we see now. It's kind of something that you learn something from your dad and you kind of do it without even knowing you're doing the same thing. Um, so those are some reasons why African states are failing. Um, and then, but what are some solutions that people have preferred for this um, problem? What are some things that people are saying that, they, that, they should, that African people should do to kind of fix the problem? No one wants to see a child like Obi in um, malnourished and, and, and impoverished like that. No one wants to see someone like that. But, but even despite all our good intentions, no one is really doing anything about it. And some scholars have like, offered some good examples and some good um, 
things to kind of look at when we're moving forward. The first one a scholar had um, offered was to define states, states differently. So the definition of states right now is that a, a state is basically a, a country that like has boundaries, has a government, has like judiciary, legislative, ex executive, and um, different kind of functions. Um, but before the Europeans came, Africans didn't have states like that. They were more either kingdoms or city-states and such. And that worked well for them in that sense. It's until the Europeans came and brought their own kind of definition that that stuff started kind of breaking apart and seeming more um, malicious than it is. And so they would like define states differently to kind of have the problem reduced. Then the second one that people offer too is to allow for more sensible secession from the parent states. So do any of you know Somalia, the country Somalia? And who knows Somaliland? Somaliland? OK, so yeah, well, just one person knows Somaliland. Somaliland is a, is a territory in Somalia that is actually kind of independent right now. So they have their own president, their own minister of finance, their own minister of education. But basically, it's just like Somaliland is just like the state of Indiana in the sense of kind of um, authority in the international sphere. And people are saying, a lot of scholars are saying that they should let Somaliland break apart from Somalia because if you look at Somalia as a whole, Somalia doesn't have control over that whole landmass. Then if you know who Sudan? Sudan? Who knows South Sudan? South Sudan. So many of us know what happened to South Sudan. South Sudan kind of broke off Sudan like maybe in 2012, 2013, and now South Sudan is in, is in, in its own civil war. So basically, they were like, South Sudan wasn't ready to be a state when it broke apart. Somaliland is. Why is Somaliland a state right now? And why is South Sudan one? That's what they mean by like making more sense in the sense that it's not just like, okay, we want to be a state. Let us be a state. It's like, we want to be a state, and we can be a state, and we know what we're doing, and we're ready for that responsibility. And then another one that's kind of general is target corruption. Corruption is ingrained everywhere, even here in the US. But it's just the level of corruption and how extensive it is. That's what really affects the state's able to function, um, ability to function. When corruption kind of leads people to them to allocate funds in the wrong way, to the large extent that people don't get basic amenities, it becomes a problem. And so what many people are saying that like, we need to like, kind of limit, limit um, terms for political leaders and kind of control what they're doing into a more eff um, effective measures, um, with more effective measures. Then, um, OK, now that I've told you all this stuff about African states and what, um, what's happened to them and what people are so, um, providing some solutions, what can you do here at IEPUI to kind of help out there are many resources here at IPO that we have. The first one is um, the ASA, African Student Association, which is just like a great resource when it comes to community and um, having information about, um, about African people, about African culture, and African problems. How many of you actually know the ASA here in this audience? Okay, yeah, just a few of you. So whenever you have time, the ASA is at the Multicultural Center. Um, just stop by and meet people. We have great people there. Then also the African Studies Department too has great programs when it comes to educating people about what's happening in Africa right now. And then the final thing I would recommend is to do your own research. Whenever you see something that you don't like, you don't really understand, it's, not, it's okay for you to say, I don't really understand this, let me ask someone, or let me do my own research. Google is a great resource. Obviously, it doesn't have everything, and it's not always correct. But once you start doing your own research, more, more things will um, come out to you, and more stuff will be opened up for you. So thank you so much, and um, I hope you guys understood and like, enjoyed my talk. Thank you.